Hello, and welcome to the Scholarly Communications video series from the Himmelfarb Health Sciences Library. My name is Brittany Smith, and I am the Metadata Specialist at Himmelfarb Library. Today, we will be discussing generative artificial intelligence tools and how to create citations when using these tools in your research. Let's get started. During this presentation, we will look at how AI tools such as ChatGPT or Bing AI can assist you with your research. Then we'll look at key features of G George Washington University's recent policy on AI usage. We will also discuss how to create citations for AI tools. And we'll end this video with some final remarks about AI. Before diving into the first section, I want to make a quick note on the emergence of AI, specifically how it relates to scholarly publishing. This slide was inspired by a similar slide from Ray Pun's presentation on using chat GPT with library instruction. In short, generative artificial intelligence tools just at, such as chat GPT and future AI models are emerging resources and the discussions surrounding the appropriate use of these tools are constantly evolving. The information presented in this video may no longer be applicable in a few months or within a year or two. If you are using an AI tool during your research, please review current submission guidelines from your institution or targeted journal to ensure you are following the accepted standards and rules. Artificial intelligence tools may be helpful in numerous ways. You can ask an AI to generate reading lists, help you brainstorm ideas, translate materials into another language, or draft content for a manuscript. As these tools develop further, additional uses may become available. While, general, while generative AI tools are exciting and helpful, it is extremely important to carefully scrutinize the content that the tool provides. For example, if an AI tool provides a list of supplemental reading for a specific research topic, check that the listed readings are retrievable and accessible. The Office of the Provost recently published guidelines for generative artificial intelligence at the George Washington University. The guidelines are linked in the slides and are worth reading for a full understanding. Here are three key takeaways. Instructors are allowed and encouraged to set rules on the use of AI in their courses. These rules should be clearly articulated to students and should be specified in writing. In the event that an instructor does not provide direction for AI usage, the following general principles apply. Students are permitted to use AI to, quote, generate content that is not submitted to an instructor for evaluation, end quote. Students may not submit content for evaluation that was generated in whole or in part by AI tools or use these tools during an assessment. These guidelines will also regularly be updated as needed and students should familiarize themselves with these guidelines. Before looking at how specific citation styles address AI, here are some general guidelines that may be useful. Because AI tools cannot take accountability for their work, they should never be listed as an author in your citation or manuscript. Next, when providing a URL for the tool, list the general URL and not the specific one created during your AI chat session. Individual chats are not retrievable, thus it is best to provide the general link. Last, describe how you use the AI tool in a separate section. How you provide this information will vary depending on the citation style you're using. Let's click th quickly look at three major citation styles. When using the AMA citation style, you will list the software name, the version number used, the publisher slash developer of the tool, the date you access the tool, and the URL that brings the user to the landing page for this resource. Both MLA and APA require similar information for creating citations for AI. For the, MLA, for the MLA citation style, you may list the prompt used under title of source, and for title of container, you would list the specific tool used. For APA citations, list the AI tool developer under author. For additional descriptive information in the brackets, share information that provides readers with a better understanding of what this resource is. For example, you may want to share in brackets that ChatGPT is a large language model. As Timothy McAdoo writes for the APA style blog, the goal of the bracketed text is to provide, to briefly describe the kind of model to your reader. If you would like additional examples on how to create citations for AI tools, please refer to any of the pages linked in this presentation. 
Since AI tools are a new resource for many people, there will likely be future changes in policies to address how they may be used in an appropriate and ethical manner. Before submitting an assignment or manuscript, carefully review the submission rubrics, rubric for rules regarding the use of AI. Similarly, if you use ChatGPT, Bing AI, or another AI tool to generate content or reading lists, evaluate the material to ensure the information is accurate. While AI tools can create content, they should never be listed as an author of a source. And last, if you use one of these tools during your research process, describe in the body of your work how the resource was used. This can be listed in a separate author's note section or in another location. Refer to the specific citation style guide you're using for more information. Generative artificial intelligence tools will continue to impact the academic landscape. If you are interested in how you can incorporate these tools into your research, please read through any of the other resources listed throughout this presentation. Thank you for taking the time to listen to artificial intelligence tools and citations. If you have enjoyed this tutorial, please visit our video library where you can also find the associated slides for this presentation. If you have any questions about the material covered in this session, please contact me at bsmith91 at gwu.edu. On behalf of the Himmelfarb Library Scholarly Communications team, thank you for listening.